one. All right, welcome back into There Will Be Bourbon, a free money edition as we prepare for UFC 253, a return to Fight Island. Now, we did this before, if you remember, but um, one of us forgot to hit record. So, having learned how to operate this machinery since then, I return with a little... A little bit of nepotism as I bring in none other than the uh, resident UFC fight expert, my brother, James Vandezeski. How are you doing, bro? Doing great. How are you doing? I'm getting there, you know, just hitting the bottle as normal. All right. So UFC 253 returning to Fight Island. As I said, we're going to cover two fights. Now, if you remember back on the last one, um, hold on. Actually, let me bring this up because I want people to understand, you know, I don't know nearly as much as this guy. However, coming into this year, or I know, I'm sorry, as we stand right now, 51, 51 and 33. All right, 51 wins and 33 losses in terms of me predicting fights. Someone who doesn't know shit in terms of the level that this guy knows here. So now if you remember back to UFC 251, he did give out his picks. He went 3-0 that day. I went one and two, so that was like the, I think that was the last losing week I had, but anyway, we're here to move on and, and hand out some free money tonight. Uh, I have five picks for the, actually four for this weekend, but we're only going to cover those two fights. As I said, we're going to start first with the, uh, in my opinion, the reigning light heavyweight champion, Dominic Reyes, as he gets a chance to go for the belt recently vacated by John Jones. He will be fighting, bro, say it. What's his name? Uh, Jan Blakovitz. That's his name. He'll be fighting him. And uh, to give you the line real quick, uh, Reyes is a heavy favorite, about minus 280, minus 300, basically a three to one favorite as we go into this fight. Uh, Reyes, as I said, I feel he won back in February over uh, John Jones. He did not. He lost a decision. Uh, he's la- he's since won his last two fights. Uh, and then what's his name again? Jan Blakovic. <laughs> that guy, in my opinion, a bit of a journeyman, losing his first four. Oh, he lost four of his first six UFC fights, but he's since, you know, he's kind of come on. He's won his last seven of his last eight. So a bit of a journeyman. He's right in the middle in terms of my, uh, the way I look at it, in terms of the, uh, the, the gambling aspect. Uh, but he is a bit of an underdog. He's about plus 230, depending on where you look in the line, which means he is, uh, like I said, about, about a one to three odd and favored for him to, to take home this fight. But again, it is a fight. Anyone can win at any given time, bro. How do you see this one going? I, I think the odds makers are pretty accurate in this one. Um, Blakovic has knockout power um, and he could end the fight if he lands clean. But I think the biggest, the, the biggest difference going to separate these two fighters is mobility speed and variety of attack um you know Blakovic is a brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt i mean he's got a solid ground game um his boxing solid uh he does have a solid jab he's got one of the best jabs in the division and he's got a nasty left hook um which he's definitely put a few people out with but um from a percentage standpoint if you look at his fights you know he's only got a 27 percent knockout rate He's, he's won more fights by decision or by submission than he has by knockout. It uh, doesn't mean that can't happen, um, but I think he's going to have a hard time finding Reyes. Reyes moves around a lot. Um, you know, part of it could just be that Blakovitz has recovered from an ACL injury that he had years back, and a lot of the time when you, you, know, you blow out your ACL, your lateral movement just never comes back the same. Um, so I think Reyes is definitely going to have a speed advantage and a mobility advantage, and when you pair that with He's going to throw a little bit more of a variety of unorthodox strikes. He's just going to have a little bit too much. Um, I also think that Blakovich is kind of peaking right now. Um, and his peak is kind of putting him in that conversation for top three or four in the division. Um, he's definitely a guy who's – he's a contender, right? Especially with, with Jones vacating, he's definitely a contender. But – um, I think Reyes hasn't reached his ceiling yet. I think the best is yet to come with him. I'm expecting him to have learned the lesson that, you know, regardless of how close it was, you got to beat you got to beat the champ to win a decision. And well, at least in the UFC, you do. You know, is to, is to win a decision against the champion. 
you better hope you at least knocked him on his butt at least three or four times in the fight because otherwise, you know, the refs are going to go with the guy who's got the bigger name um, and that uh, they're more familiar with, right, versus a young guy who just kind of is come out of nowhere almost. He's had a couple couple impressive wins. He's had a couple decision wins that, yeah, you know, beating Ovin St. Pru by decision. I mean, talk about journey fighter, journeyman fighters. Um, that's not – the biggest statement to put on things, but can't judge a guy from one performance. Um, I think that if he brings his game and kind of learns his lessons and, and, and tries to go for the finish without wasting his gas tank, I think that by round two, maybe three, he gets a TKO. So you don't think it's going to, is this fight? Is this a five round fight? It should be right. Is it a yeah. co-main event? Okay. So yeah. Uh, so that was the other thing, because from what I read up on these three, um, Reyes, because uh, he had that big kicking game, you know, the last time he fought uh, Jones, I think like it was the first two rounds, he was very heavy with the kicks and then they just kind of disappeared. Was, that one, was he the one that he, he hurt his, his ACL during that fight? Or was that the other guy he fought? I think he hurt his foot. Okay, it was his foot. Yeah, he couldn't. He couldn't basically uh, throw kicks from round three on. Essentially, is what it looked like. Yeah, um, and, and the unfortunate thing is, those are sometimes things that can happen, especially in a sport fight where you're fighting with with bare feet, and sometimes all it takes is for your foot to catch a knee or catch an catch an elbow, and um, you know all those little bones in your feet are not designed to win that battle. You know, um, they they're a very effective weapon. Uh, definitely a weapon that I don't know where everybody, where, where everybody was for the last five years, six years versus John Jones. Um, but his last two opponents have really kind of gone after the low kicks and both have had mm-hmm. really good success. So he's looked very beatable and human in those fights. I mean, both those guys are great fighters. and You know, he got the nod from the judges. So you can't sit around as a yeah. fighter complaining about a decision. You either got to go out and take it or you got to get the knockout. Uh, well, I was with you for one of them and I still feel he lost both of those fights, but you know, whatever. I don't judge. Um, I don't think anyone disagreed with me in terms of the fans, but Hey, you're right. For whatever reason, the UFC is very big on, uh, you got to beat the champ. You got to knock him out or whatever. You don't get to go to the card and get a decision, but Reyes is going to have an opportunity to finally claim that title. We both think he does again to kind of explain this gambling aspect. If you're just bored and tuning into this and you're like, what are they talking about when it comes to gambling? All right. So he's a minus, as I said, he is a minus 280. That's at least the line I got it at, which means you got to bet $280 to win a hundred. Okay. Uh, now if you want to go the underdog route, like I said, the other guy, Jan is a plus 230, which means if you bet a hundred, you would win 230. So Bet at your own peril, okay? Now we move on to the actual, well, it is a co-main event, but it is the main event, the final fight of the evening. It will be the style bender, Israel Adesanya versus Paulo Costa. All right, the odds on this one, uh, Adesanya is at minus 170, as high as minus 200, depending where you look. And then Paulo Costa is at plus 150. So one and a half to one and a, you know, one and a half to two to one odds for Adesanya to defend his belt. And Costa has... Uh, he is a, he's not a significant underdog, but he is a pretty, he's a pretty big underdog. He's not expected to win. All right. Now a little bit about these guys, neither fighter, Adesanya being a kickboxer, uh, neither fighter has a single takedown recorded in the UFC up to this point. Uh, but the style bender does have a solid takedown defense. He's, he's stuffed 82% of those takedowns. Um, Costa on the other side, big puncher. He averages about eight and a half significant strikes per round. But he absorbs a lot of punishment. He's, or, he, he's taken about seven of those per round himself. Size and reach advantage, obviously, to Asana. He's a big boy. He's got an 80 inch reach, or 80, 80 inch reach, speaking very well tonight, as brought to you by Evan Williams Bottle and Bond, fueling my, uh, my speech impediments. And then Costa uh, tends to be the aggressor, which I think could favor him because Adesanya looks to be more of a. Um, he looks to be more of a counter striker, right? So he's, he's waiting to uh, return fire rather than bring the fight to you. And Costa seems to be the opposite. So it could be a good, st- you know, what's that saying always? Uh, styles make fights. This could be one of those ones where we get a big, uh, 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 maybe an outcome that we're not expecting. But overall, uh, I feel Adesanya is going to win this fight still because I think he's the better of the two. Uh, bro, what do you think? What do you see? Yeah. Um, you know, Adesanya coming from a professional kickboxing background, 
Um, Undefeated, nineteen and zero, right? No, he's been he he was knocked out. He, he, oh, really? He okay. Out. Yeah. He, um, I don't know if that's his only loss, um, but he does have a, a knockout loss. Um, and I can't remember if that was in Lion Fight or Glory or which which promotion that was. Um, other than that, though, I mean, obviously he had a, a very good kickboxing record. I mean, it's kickboxing, you know, when you've got punches, knees, kicks, two guys going full blown. And kickboxing is not like boxing where you have 10 or 12 round fights. I mean, the fights are generally three rounds or five rounds. So, you know, it pushes the action a lot more. So you have a tendency to guys really just go after each other. Plus, a lot of the times they fight in tournaments. So, you know, there's there's way more benefit to going in and just trying to get the knockout and get out of that fight without taking injury. So it's, it's really no, um, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of, you know, having a sing- singular KO loss in right. elite kickboxing with fighters that do come from that professional kickboxing background uh they do have a tendency to be counter strikers i mean part of that's just because you know we as mma fans get so locked into a good offense or good defense is a good offense right um and the way the ufc scores it rewards people who push the action forward so i think that as a whole mma striking is still kind of evolving the defensive aspect Adesanya does that very well. Obviously, um, he's got tools in his toolbox that he can use from his kickboxing background. Plus, he's, I have yet to see him be in a fight where he's fighting someone even remotely his size. 80-inch mm-hmm. uh, reach at 185-pound weight class is you know, pretty abnormal. I mean, you got to look at someone like John Jones. Dude. Yeah, it's the same guy, just a weight class that, down, right? Exactly. He's like a miniature yeah. without the elite wrestling. Um, Costa, like I said, like, I mean, he's – all offense, no defense. Um, he's sort of like a more refined, slightly more refined version of Vanderlei Silva in the modern era. He just wants to come forward and <clears throat> throw every punch and every kick as hard as he can and just keep doing it until his opponent falls over. Um, a lot of guys have tried to solve the Adesanya riddle. I think the guy that did it the best was Gastulum. Um mm who has a lot in common with Costa, except that Gastelum does have the wrestling background. He just doesn't really use it in his fights. Um, he was actually shorter. I mean, he's only five. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, he's actually smaller than Costa. And he actually had a lot of success uh, against Adesanya, but he's a little bit, has a little bit faster hands than Costa. I think the difference is though, Costa does bring really hard kicks, <clears throat> especially kicks to the body. Um, when you have a lanky guy like, like Adesanya, um, how's he going to deal with that? How's he going to deal with power kicks to the body? How's he going to deal with power kicks to the leg, which Costa can bring both those. Um, I don't necessarily see him struggling with the, the boxing aspect. Really, it's does he keep his range but do it without getting his legs chopped out from under him? Um, in most scenarios, I, I would say yes, right? Um, can Costa get a knockout? Of course. I mean, the guy's a tank. He hits like a truck. But, you know, if I, if I had to bet, I'm betting Adesanya by decision, five rounds. Decision? Huh? Okay, there you go. Because that was the other thing I, I would say uh, from everywhere that I've been able to look up, it, it, everyone seems to be in unanimous uh, agreement that Costa tends to run out of gas after the first round. So he goes all out, and then it's kind of a uh, see what happens from there. Um, but, yeah, if it comes down to a cardio fight, obviously Adesanya would be favored. You're predicting that one goes the distance. Um, I am going to say that Adesanya knocks him out. I will go with a round four knockout. So we are in agreement on both of these fights. Um, And it's not because, you know, there's any like trickery here. It's like they're both rather decent favorites. So yeah, sometimes you don't need to outthink the room. Go with what should bring you money. Remember, there is significant risk involved on both of them. You're about a two to one uh, risk versus reward on both of these fighters. Uh, any other fights of the night that you're looking forward to, or is that pretty much what we're getting this card for? Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, for me personally, I think those are the ones that I'm looking at. Um, as for the other fights on the card, there's not really a lot that's kind of catching my eye. I look at those as kind of uh, get up and refresh your bourbon type fight. <laughs> Pop some popcorn in the oven. Uh, <laughs> You know, but you never know. Sometimes, sometimes those fights that you don't expect to be um, great wind up being 
the best fights of the night sometimes you know it's hard to sometimes just look at something on paper and say okay that's going to be a good fight or that's gonna be a bad fight you get the other the opposite sometimes you look you go wow that's an amazing matchup and then two guys kind of just circle each other for five rounds so you never really know what you're going to get until until they get in there right that's why they fight the fights and people don't just sit around picking picking the odds in vegas and then just expecting it to magically happen so yeah Speaking of boring fights, Colby Covington last week, the most exciting thing was uh, President Trump calling him in the middle of his post-fight interview. So if you didn't see that, um, but no, real quick though, kind of one of the other fights leading into this, you have, uh, what is it? It's a, is it a featherweight fight? Yeah, I think so. Kai Cara France versus Brandon Royval. Like, so Cara France's nickname is Don't Blink, but every one of his UFC fights has gone the distance. So kind of one of those monikers that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah, that's kind of... <laughs> I, 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 it's kind of the problem with the 125 pound division in men's MMA. Um, should it exist? Yeah, I think absolutely think it should exist. I think we need to have, you know, a, a weight class for the smaller guys who are walking around at 140, 135 pounds. But, you know, I think the challenge is, is those guys <clears throat> don't necessarily hit as hard as the other weight classes, but they are so skilled mm. and they are so technical um, that, what it kind of turns into is neither guy can really land something really clean. You know, there's a lot of not putting weight down on punches because they're focused so much on speed and it's kind of just speed versus speed. And I mean, maybe in a 10 round fight, you know, with those little guys, cause their gas tanks too are very different from a 205 pound fighter. Right. I mean, literally these are guys who show up to the cage 80 pounds lighter and in a lot of cases, they're probably walking around over 100 pounds lighter than a 205-pound fighter. So, you know, five rounds for them, those guys can do that in their sleep. Yeah. Never seen any of them get tired. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, just different. You know, it's like, so, I mean, who knows? What does the UFC do? Do they start thinking about that? Do they start thinking about seven-round fights for mm -hmm. lower weight classes? Something to get more finishes right because mm -hmm. i think the 125 pound division's always been the worst division in, in men's mma it's just it's never been exciting i don't care who talks about how skilled this guy or that guy is i mean it i respect it you know i respect them as as great martial artists but they're just so evenly matched and so technical like they're gonna have to find a way right like what are they mm -hmm. gonna do to get well, these guys tired and then maybe someone just finally starts to drop his guard and he gets he gets knocked out versus okay I'm, I'm so technical i see all the shots coming i'm able to roll with them and neither guy commits to doing what like perfect example heavyweights right like everything is all power so it's so easy to catch a guy off balance because both guys are just swinging for the fences right mm -hmm. whereas with that 125 pound division like everything is like designed with defense in mind first and speed second and then the knockout if it happens it happens but it generally just doesn't happen Unless you've got an elite guy fighting a guy who's fairly top ten. Well, just. yeah, and I think you get into – I mean, it's a good idea. I think it, the only thing you run into is the risk of, you know, injury, obviously significant injury. But I've always thought what they should do with title fights and title fights only is you start as your base is five rounds. But if that fight goes a distance, hey, we're going to the next round until someone's actually declared a winner. You know what I mean? Through knockout or whatever. Because, yeah, it's rare that you get a five-round, you know, fight where it's just the guy's just completely dominating him. Usually he gets knocked out or there's a stoppage before that. If it's evenly matched through five rounds, hey, man, take it to the six and see what happens. But, you know, what you're saying in terms of seven rounds for those guys, I don't know. That's, I mean, it's an interesting idea. Probably never will happen. You know that. But, I mean, it is something to talk about because, again, I don't, I don't like the fact that Jones has basically skated by off reputation his last two fights. I feel he lost both of those to Reyes um, and the other guy before him. I forget, his, was it Santos that beat him or he yeah. fought? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you leave that to the scorecard. You know, if you're going to go – if you complete the five rounds, fuck it. Let's go six, man. See what happens. Well, you see it in boxing too, right? Yeah. A lot champions once they've defended the belt a couple times they have a tendency to just oh mayweather's the biggest and all the fights just turn into decision snooze fest yep. <clears throat> right so it's i think it can be hard when someone has been a champ in a weight class for that long i mean no one's been able to hold on to a belt as long as jones did so yeah. 2011 you know, nine years 
long time coming, but I, I just think it's kind of a, a weak move on his part because it's kind of a strategic move to look at, okay, DC's like 75 years old and you know, <laughs> Miosic is looking at 40. So yeah. he's just kind of being an opportunist. Going, okay, you know, the two best guys are old and past their prime. Yeah. So I'm going to sneak in there and hopefully, you know, so whatever. I mean, well, we'll he's, how, you he, know? He, he's been a heavyweight fighting at light heavyweight anyway. Like what the dude's six, four, he shows up two twenty five, two thirty 30 anyway. So yeah, good for him. Um, I don't think it's going to go as great for him as he thinks because of what you just said. If anyone realizes that all I got to do is kick this dude's legs for four rounds or five rounds, you know, heavyweight's got a little bit more pop, but then, you know, they come over the top with that, with the punch. I don't, I don't, the problem with Jones is I don't think like, aside from these last two fights, he's never really been tested. Right. Other than, um, God, who was the dude that came back after a few years who pushed him to five rounds and then he, Jones just annihilated him in like two or three. It was probably his three fights ago that guy i can't remember his name gustafson yeah gustafson um but outside of that jones is just never he's just basically dominated that division and it's just you know aside from the last two fights where i don't know what it is i don't, I don't know if it's more of a mental thing because the guy's got so many off the or out of the out of the octagon issues i just don't think the heavyweight's gonna go as he as he envisions i mean he's of course he's gonna get paid you know money's not an issue for someone like him at this point but to think he's just gonna dominate the heavyweight division i just don't i don't see it I think it's going to work two ways. I think he's banking on the fact that heavyweights have no defense and um, he can maybe seize an opportunity by being the lighter, faster fighter and taking advantage of a lack of defense. Um, especially when we talk about if he does wind up fighting Miosic. I mean, Miosic has done nothing but block punches with his face in every fight he's ever been in. With the, <laughs> of, the only time the guy ever showed a defensive strategy was when he fought in Ganu and that was the best fight the guy's ever fought in his career. It wasn't the most exciting, but I mean, he completely dominated the scariest guy in the sport because yeah. actually used defense and didn't <clears throat> there and play rock and sock and robots like he did with Daniel Cormier for three fights. Right. I mean, it yielded him a knockout win, a knockout loss and a decision win because, you know, and he didn't learn anything, you know, like he, he looked like he improved in the second fight and then he just kind of went right back to the same thing in the third fight. Like, all right, I'll just block punches with my face. And since I'm, yeah. Really yeah, bigger. and it was it was it was boring. I mean, <clears throat> um, so I think Jones is looking at that. I, I think for sure. I think that, um, but he's you not. Think gonna he can beat Nagano? He's not going to have you know this ridiculous eight inch reach advantage at yeah. the heavyweight that he does against two hundred fibers. Um, you know, and if he's going to go in there and cheat like he usually does at two hundred five and poke everybody in the eyes, I mean, you know, he does that to a guy like Ngannou, and the guy just might go full aggro on him and try to, to pull his head off. Um, you know, so we'll see. I mean, it, it, it's exciting that it's something to talk about. It's something that brings new life into the heavyweight division because, you know, talk about a division that just needs some needs some life kicked into it because unfortunately the talent pool is so small. You know, you look at the guys who would be competing in that division and, you know, the best athletes are, are in the NFL or the NBA or, you know, in Olympic wrestling. And so, like, you get the guys like Cormier every once in a while to come over because there's not a lot of money in Olympic wrestling, right? Yeah. Uh, but even that's kind of dried up. Like, it's not like the era where, like, you had – Matt you Hughes know, and all those guys. Hammerhouse and Mark Kerr and Mark Coleman and, and all these guys coming over from that wrestling background. It's kind of strange considering how much money there is in the sport. Now you almost see less wrestlers coming into the sport than you did five or 10 years ago, which is interesting. Lastly, before we get out of here, do you think Jones can beat Nagano, someone with that power? Well, yeah, because he's way more technical. You know I mean? Nagano, yeah. like the guy literally has zero skill set. The guy <laughs> punches as hard as he physically can because he's just a freakishly gifted guy as far as his his power and his speed for his size I mean there's a guy who I mean granted who knows what he was taking but you know the guy was showing up 265 ripped and was his hands oh on the level of guys fighting at 205 and when you put the power that he was putting into those shots I mean that shot he, he hit over him with I mean took five years off the guy's life I mean, <laughs> he's not going to get those years back. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's hard. And that is the, 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 the kind of the heavyweights curse, right, is they just all fall in love with their power. And they go, wow, I mean, like I literally just have to yeah. 
land one clean shot and the guy's jaw is going to shatter. Well, that's great. But what happens when that plan doesn't work? What happens when you start getting tired? What happens when the other guy starts landing a few, a few clean shots first, what's your game plan after that? So I think the difference is, is Jones is going to have the experience of having to go through a variety of wars versus a variety of opponents. Um, But, you know, uh, we'll see. Do you think, uh, okay, I, I do got one more question. Um, we were going to get out of here, but we're not now. So you think, Jones, you think his first fight's going to be a title fight in heavyweight? I think the UFC is very opportunistic, and they're doing everything they can to keep their stars relevant and bank on as much money as possible. So, you know, I mean, they're already talking about, oh, we got big things planned for Conor McGregor next year. I'm like, the guy's retired like six times, and <laughs> it's starting to get ridiculous. He's never mm-hmm. going to camp at 155 i mean Ooh. the best big thing they can plan is forcing him to somehow make weight again at 145 because that's where he has the most realistic shot of, of being champion yeah, he's yeah one he's just small. Too, he's too small for 155 i mean those yeah. guys are all walking around at 100 <laughs> plus pounds he showed up to 170 pound fight versus diaz weighing 168 on the scale he didn't even make weight for the fight he was under the weight class um so yeah i mean short, he racket yeah. This, this sport, I think, definitely needs to start really reanalyzing um, weight classes. I definitely think we need to add a 225-pound weight class, um, a 205, a 195, a 180. I mean, something to just mix up the weight classes a little bit. Uh, or go back to the UFC one days and it's just an all for one. <laughs> no? No, we're going to do that? Okay. <laughs> All right, so all right, so you, you heard the fight predictions. You, you heard some insight and analysis on some of the stuff coming up. Uh, we'll do this again next month. We got UFC 254 where Gaethje takes on Khabib. Any uh, early predictions on that before we uh, break it down a little more? I like Gaethje, especially he's a big underdog. He's like one plus 175, I think, right now. All over that. Love it. I think that it's a, it's a 50-50 fight. I think that. Khabib hasn't fought in a longer amount of yeah, time. and he's, so, he's gone through a lot of shit, unfortunately, personally. He, he's had um, a little more activity. Um, yeah. And he's the more well-rounded fighter. Uh, but, you know, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Like, if, if he can stay up on his feet and force Khabib to sit there and box with him and, and take those low kicks. Yeah, he can't, he can't go down on the ground. You're right. Uh, unlike McGregor, who didn't have that option, <laughs> um, it's really going to come down to like what guy can control the fight and keep it in his waters, right? Because um, Gage is a great wrestler, but his submission game is not on the level of Khabib. So if they're going to sit there and, and roll and, and be on the ground and grapple, I mean, he better have an exit plan to get off his back fast because we've seen what Khabib does to anybody on the ground. Um, you know, he's, he's world class and there's nobody who can last longer than a minute or two on the ground with that guy. I mean, he's he's yeah. slick. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, Gaethje, if someone's going to stop his takedowns, it's Gaethje. I mean, he's got, he's got great wrestling, and then he can back it up. He can fight in all ranges. He doesn't have to sit on the outside. He's able to box and throw kicks from the inside even. You know, he's, he's very good at that. So, as for the rest of the card, I'm not very happy about the rest of the card. <laughs> I don't know if you've looked at it. It's a little bit No, I haven't. Um, so, yeah, I, I expected a little bit more considering that main event. I know everyone's going to be really excited about um you know it's a fight everyone's been looking forward to uh so maybe maybe they'll add last minute another fight or two that's at least going to be worthy of that uh of the main event well yeah i mean a lot of that has to do with some strategic interest on espn and uh, uh ufc's part based on their contract ufc had to put on like x amount of fights in order to get their payout bonus and they're probably spreading it out and unfortunately they're leaving some of their bigger cards the pay-per-view cards a little thin because they're trying to put those fights on you know espn plus stuff so business man it, it'd be what it'd be but all right thanks for joining us bro we'll do this again next month uh thanks for tuning in to there will be bourbon special there will be bets edition for ufc 253 from fight island go get paid remember adesanya and reyes free money if you don't want it it's cool i'll take it all right thanks bro all right buddy